the senior advisor of the Judicial Crisis Network. So Gary and I are going to have a conversation this morning uh, to understand everything that's been happening with the courts. Gary is a close friend of ours, and we're so glad to have him here. Like I said, uh, he has been absolutely critical in what's been happening with the courts, what the Trump administration has been doing with the courts. These are big issues. Uh, you know, politicians come and go, but that judicial uh, branch and the changes that you're making there are really generational changes. You want to talk a little yeah, bit about that? Absolutely, Jeff. I've been working on this issue going back uh, almost 15 years now when I was the founding executive director of JCN. And I can tell you and report to you now, let me paraphrase Charles Dickens, it was the best of times and it was the best of times. <laughs> we, are, we are seeing amazing success, the types with, which a lot of us maybe never dreamed of. We didn't think that we would be sitting here today in uh, 2019 after having uh, two years of Trump nominations being made to the, the courts. And I want to report about that record-breaking pace. We have now seen not just two Supreme Court nominees, but 42 Circuit Court nominees, a record for any president. So it's an amazing pace. These are lifetime appointments, as you said, Jeff. More than 125 total Trump nominees have gone uh, through, but there is still a lot of work left to be done. I think we've got a graphic just showing kind of where we stand today, and um, we've got more than 100 other vacancies left to fill. And we've got more circuit court nominations left to fill, and it's exciting time that we have uh, right now in the nation's courts. So we do have a, is that the graphic there? That's it. So walk us through that graphic here real quick, Gary. So yeah, more, more than 145 vacancies remain, six on the Circuit Court of Appeals. Actually, I think that might be a down one because we did just confirm one more this week and uh, three other district court noms. So there is a lot more to be done, but uh, Majority Leader McConnell has been very clear when it comes to these nominations. He has said he will leave no vacancy behind, and I promise you in Washington, with him and Chairman Graham leading the Judiciary Committee, all of these vacancies are going to be fulfilled. So how many circuit courts have you flipped, and is it possible that the Ninth Circus, sorry, Ninth Circuit could possibly be flipped? So we, we've already seen one circuit court flip during the uh, Trump years here, and that just means a majority that are now Republican appointed versus Democrat appointed. Uh, we also are getting much closer on a couple more, and the miracle of miracles would be we can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel with the Ninth Circuit. When we started the Trump administration, it was 17 to 8 Democrat to Republican nominees to the Ninth Circuit. As of this week, President Trump has confirmed seven nominees to the Ninth Circuit, and when we finish up with the vacancies that are there, it'll be 16-13, closer than any other court to seeing that flip. And the really exciting news is there are 11 judges out of those 29 that are on that court that are open and available to take senior status. So it's possible, possible friends, you could actually see the Ninth Circuit begin to have some sane uh, decisions come out. It still remains the most, uh, uh, the, the court that's overturned the most. 86% of its cases this term were overturned. That's still a record, but we could start to see sanity return to the Ninth, and that's exciting news for all of us. So 86 are overturned by the Ninth Circuit, so they, they, they have a success rate of 14%. Correct. This this year they had. So, so if if you got a 14 percent on any test you ever took, you're you're failing, and I think that's a clear sense that the Ninth Circuit's failing, right? I, I think you said it, Jeff. <laughs> well, I mean, the key is that we're not talking about. This isn't a partisan issue. We're not talking about putting Republicans out there. It's really about putting justices on the court that respect the original intent of the Constitution, right? And go back to what this is, what they intended. Going back to the original language of the of the of the uh, Constitution, not treating it as a living document that needs to be adjusted and changed by at the whims of whoever that judge is. Can you talk a little bit just generally about the philosophy 
of who you're trying to put on the courts. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. We're not looking for um, politicians. We're looking for those that are going to respect the Constitution and look at the written word and respect the written word. You know, judges like Scalia and Thomas who understand that original intent is part of an overall philosophy and that means those big decisions they're sending back to the people's representatives. And when Congress isn't doing their job, that doesn't mean the Supreme Court should step in in every case. When legislatures aren't doing their jobs, it doesn't mean that we want nine black robe justices from on high to make decisions on every case of the day. And uh, every issue. And that's, that's really what we're getting back to. We're starting to see a turn. We're starting to see a pivot point in the history of our courts, and it's exciting. We didn't expect to be here maybe just two years ago. That's great. So during the last Democratic debate, you all, Judicial Crisis Network, ran a advertisement, right? You want to uh, show did. the ad and talk a little bit about it? Yeah, we thought during their debates would be a great time to run this ad. If you guys could cue that up. Smeared Judge Kavanaugh. They tried to ruin his life, all in pursuit of political domination and control. Their coordinated attacks failed. Now the same radicals want to pack the court. They've built a secret list of judges that they won't show anyone, keeping Americans in the dark, running for president with a list of secret court picks. What are they hiding? Tell Joe Biden Trump released his list. Why won't you? So, we, we thought it might be a good time to ask these Democratic presidential candidates, why won't they do what President Trump did and be open and transparent about who they would put on the court? Why won't they share with us who they think should be uh, on, on high on the Supreme Court? Is it going to be Ruth Bader Ginsburg clones? Is that what we're going to see? So we just think they should release their list and share this. They've talked about creating a pool of candidates. They're trying to say it's not a list. It's just kind of a group that's out there. Um, so we thought we'd ask them, and we're going to continue to ask them and put the onus on them to explain what's their vision for the Supreme Court. Who would they put on? That's release great. the list. I mean, and this was kind of historic for Donald Trump in 2016, right? To release that list during the campaign. And, uh, and now the Democrats this year aren't doing that at all, right? Yeah, that, that's right, Jeff. Nothing like that had ever been done in the history of presidential politics before. Uh, in one debate, he named some names, and then he decided, I'm going to release an entire list to show the American people and to show those that you can trust me when it comes to Supreme Court nominations because of the quality of the people that are on this list. And it was a huge turning point in the campaign, and, and that goes to his credit. All right, so one of those names, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, you were part of that whole chaos happening around there, and now he's been in for how many months? Yeah, he, he's been in since sworn in last, he, he finished through last October. Okay. And uh, he, he's joined the court, and I, I am proud to say he's joined Colorado's own Neil Gorsuch on the court. And right. uh, they have been a, a great set of additions, and you've really seen, like I said, a, a turning point. You know, it, it takes a while with law. Law is kind of like the Titanic or like an aircraft carrier. How do you turn something like that around from going into the iceberg? But I think we've begun to turn it around, and you saw this term big cases. Brett Kavanaugh was very, very strong on the gerrymandering case, on the census decision, on the administrative law case, and of course, I think one you're going to hear about very soon, the Bladensburg Peace Cross, which was a huge religious liberty victory. And uh, him and Neil Gorsuch were very uh, strong, and, and I think you can be very proud of President Trump's uh, nominees on the Supreme Court. So, uh, as we mentioned, you were through that whole process. Carrie Severino, one of your colleagues, we saw on the news a lot. She was uh, one of the leading voices from Judicial Crisis Network dealing through the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. Uh, she has a new book, yes. your colleague does, and you want to talk a little bit about it? Yes, highly recommend anyone check out Justice on Trial, the uh, Kavanaugh confirmation and the future of the Supreme Court. And the justice that was on trial was not just Brett Kavanaugh, it was justice. It was the understanding of innocence until proven guilty. And there was so much in this. I don't, I don't know how many of you watched those hearings at some point, but I think America was riveted to, to those hearings. And this, you get a hundred of the top-notch uh, interviews with leaders across the country, tells the true story, the true background, um, 
for decades, and I'll, and I'll end with this, we have let the other side attack and abuse and brand our Supreme Court nominees, whether it was Bork or Thomas for the last 30 years. It's time that we start telling the truth and getting out our side, go beyond the mainstream media and get the truth out there, and that's what this book does. Friends, uh, get to know Gary. You're going to be around this afternoon. We're going to get a chance to meet you. Uh, get to know Gary because you're going to see his influence come up. We have potential future Supreme Court nominations, possibly other important uh, folks, as you mentioned on the, on the slide there, that are still in the process. So uh, this is a battle that's going to continue to go. Get to know the Judicial Crisis Network. And uh, Gary, thank you for all of the work you're doing on behalf of the Constitution. Thank you God so much, you. Jeff.